You know what's wrong with South Africa? All you foreigners. You must all go back to where you came from. <laughs> you Cameroonians, Congolese, Pakistanis, Somalis, Ghanaians, and Kenyans. And of course, you Nigerians. And you Europeans. Let's not forget all you Indians and Chinese. Even you Afrikaners. Back to Swaziland for you Swatis, Lesotho for you Sotho, Swanas, Venda, Zulus, everybody. Real South Africans love diversity. This video is titled Why Africans Migrate Here. And I'm referring to Cape Town, but you might be in a different city, Johannesburg, Durban, Pretoria, just somewhere else, but you can still relate to what I'm saying. And I've noticed this when I catch an Uber or when I go out somewhere and I talk amongst the people, and I notice that the person I'm talking to, when I ask them, are you from Cape Town? Are you from South Africa? They say, well, I'm from Nigeria, I'm from Zimbabwe, or another African country in the continent. And I'm going to give you a few reasons why I think lots of migrants like coming to South Africa. For number one, I think it's because of economic opportunities. If you have not already, check this video out right here. Because I mentioned that, in my opinion, out of all the African countries I've visited so far, South Africa, in my opinion... Is the continent's most developed economy and also when it comes to infrastructure based on the countries I visited so far Morocco Cape Verde Ethiopia all those countries cannot compare or compete against South Africa when it comes to infrastructure and going back to the economic opportunities migrants are attracted by the prospect of better employment and higher wages that in their home country doesn't compare to the country that they're currently going to or living in, which is here in South Africa. Next is the political stability. I know a lot of my friends, they don't like the current president, but I tell them South Africa, despite all the challenges, is more stable when it comes to the politics than your neighbors you know i'll be telling my friends go to mozambique live there and see what will happen see how long it would take you to come back to south africa you know we all complain when it comes to the political stability of our country until we go to another country that is worse as i mentioned in a previous video it is no such thing as a perfect country it doesn't matter where you go. It's not perfect. It doesn't exist. I can just hear my friends now here in South Africa, in Cape Town. But it's corrupt here. Okay, it's corrupt everywhere. It's just that some countries, their corruption is more hidden. They're better at it than some other countries. That's just how it is. Then you have to take time to think to yourself, well, if the economy here in South Africa is so bad, if the infrastructure is so bad, if the political stability of the country is going downhill why is there so many migrants coming here why not just go to another country i can answer that it's because they feel that this country is the best choice it's the better choice and then you have education i didn't really know this until i had to look it up but some of the top universities in the continent of africa are here in south africa and you have some migrants come for higher education opportunities. So why not go to the best university in your continent and that will be here in South Africa? You're going to have some people disagree with lots of migrants entering their country. The number one reason is because of jobs, competition for jobs. Increased labor supply can sometimes lead to competition for jobs which in return results in lower wages and challenges for local people finding jobs. The reason could be because of the pressure on public services. When you have lots of migrants coming into a country, it can place pressure on public services such as the country's health care. Um, it could be housing. 
And all this can lead to struggle to accommodate the new growing population. I can think of a lot of challenges. I can think of more cons than pros, especially when it comes to the social tensions. Because now you're competing against people for resources. Also, there's xenophobia, in which I will talk about a little bit later in this video. But when you already have a country that has a growing population and you add migrants on top of that and everyone is fighting for resources on top of that the job market isn't huge so that leads to our border areas have turned into the wild wild west where it's every man for himself these are the words of afri forums yak uh, jacques rather Brodrick, uh, describing the country's porous entry and exit points he has been part of a team that made a documentary series for the lobby group which paints a bleak picture of the situation at different border posts uh, connecting us with our neighbors the series highlights rampant corruption criminality and communities living in fear uh, jacques Broderick joins me now um, live via Zoom just to uh, give us more details about uh, what he has seen at the ports of entry. Jacques, thank you very much for your time here on ENCA. Uh, now, in this uh, particular docu-series, you also look at uh, strategically your Botswana, Lesotho, uh, Swaziland, and you talk about how this is also affecting in, uh, um, livelihoods, especially in the farms, in terms of livestock uh, uh, theft. Yeah, that's correct. I mean, there's so many problems that are caused by this lack of water control and, and, and absolute mayhem. But um, cattle theft and stock theft is definitely one of them, um, especially if you look on the, the border that we do have with Lesotho. There are up to 500 farmers there, border farmers, who have had to give up pieces of their land because they simply cannot utilize it anymore. It's just too dangerous. Uh, they can't leave cattle there because it gets stolen. Their fences get stolen. Pumps get stolen. Before I played the video, I was saying that we all know that it can lead to crime. It can lead to violence. It can lead to a lot of bad things, especially if the people, the migrants coming into that country is not making a legal contribution to that country. Legal as in getting a job and providing for themselves legally. And contributing to that new country that they're living in. And meaning also contributing, meaning participating in helping that country's economy expand, grow. Yeah. In these townships in South Africa, there is names for these stores and it's called Espaza. Because when I went to Langa for a township tour, and that's what you're seeing right now, a picture of... The clip of my video, Cape Town, South Africa, Langa Township Unmasked. I had met some of these Ethiopians that ran these stores. And, you know, I conversated and asked them, you know, what exactly in Ethiopia you're from. They was like from Addis Ababa. And I was telling them that I had went there. And the whole time in the back of my mind, I was thinking to myself, why are they here, especially in the township at this store, running this store? But now, you know, I get it. It's just a better economy and it's better opportunities here in South Africa. That's the reason. As you see in this video, they're having border disputes with migrants entering Poland. As the migrants try to enter, you can see Border Patrol spray them with mace. So this is just another example of all around the world. It's always going to be border disputes. And you're going to have some countries that's against migrants entering the country. Here in South Africa, they call it xenophobia. The attack of a person from another country but as you can see other countries experience the same thing and they do not call it xenophobia they just say that your country doesn't have a crisis therefore we don't have the financial stability to allow all your people to come at this particular time or we don't have the resources for you to compete with the people in our country so everybody around the world sees it as different and here's a little article I found about the Poland border and the problems they're having over there in Europe. So on the topic why Africans migrate here to South Africa, in particular Cape Town, I would say about 70% of my friends all agree that it is a certain African country that migrants come here that give their country a bad name. I'm not going to say the country, so if you're South African or you're here in Cape Town, 
you might know you can discuss that in the comments section amongst yourselves so overall when it comes amongst my friends i would say most of them they don't like it so when you have more than one person and they're all saying the same thing it is a problem it is a problem just like where i'm from in the u.s we have a big problem with migrants entering our borders and you might be wondering well what's the big deal why can't migrants come to another country for a better life and that's true but the only problem is it's not 1980 anymore they say every decade every two decades technology advance therefore the jobs we used to have no longer exist and if they do exist it's slowly disappearing so if the job market is slow and also you increase in the population at the same future of travel here locally united airlines and archer aviation say that air taxis will arrive at o'hare within the next two years elizabeth matthews is live near the west side with details elizabeth yeah, guys, this is where the route will start for those air taxis to get you to O'Hare. So just imagine being on the, the near west side and getting to O'Hare in just <clears throat> 10 minutes. Driving from our location right now to O'Hare, 53 minutes. So how about that? So like you said, Archer Aviation and United, they are partnering together to come up with this to get you to the airport to avoid all the traffic, all the construction. The fully electric planes will take off from Vertiport and land at O'Hare. A spokesperson says these new planes are not commercially flying anywhere yet, but will be safe, sustainable, affordable, and quiet. It'll cost you the same as an Uber X from downtown Chicago to O'Hare, which is roughly 100, 150 bucks. But don't get too excited. This isn't happening happening until 2025. It's a uh, vertical lifting vehicle that flies about 150 miles an hour. Um, it's a one pilot, four passenger vehicle and does very quick 20 to 40 minute trips. And then it takes about 15 minutes to charge once you land. So it's very much like an air taxi in a sense that it's going from trunk routes from city center to ORD and back and forth in quick 20 to 40 mile missions. And one reason why in the U.S. we're trying to just ramp up our uh, technology is because we're in competition, you might not know, with China. So also, at the same time, they're ramping up their technology. So we don't have any jobs, basically, in the U.S. And I'm pretty sure in other countries it's the same way, if not worse, no jobs. So the migrant crisis I see as a big issue worldwide. Any job you can think of in the West or even in China that you can think of is going to have some type of technology involved which means less people is going to be doing that job so i can feel what some people say in south africa when it comes to migrants crossing over in their country and about the job situation i can really understand that migrating to a different country the legal way and you're coming with skills of some type and you know the language of that country that's a whole different situation. I'm talking about coming to a country and you offer no skills and it could lead to that person committing crimes or some type of illegal activities and you become just a non-productive new citizen. As you see in all these clips, electronics and AI are becoming more advanced, especially in the West and China. So if your country doesn't have all this technology as of yet just imagine when it does come and what will happen to your employment also i think that each country has a right to speak their voice when it comes to neighboring countries entering their country illegally you know it's a legal activity and also you don't realize how big of a burden that becomes because now you're increasing the population and the job market each year gets worse and worse. So what are these new people in this new country going to do? That's always been my question. So if you're South African, how do you all feel about migrants entering your country? Is it a burden? Are you okay with it? Do you think it spikes the increase of crime? Does South Africa provide housing and employment and some type of health care for the migrants that's crossing into your borders? Let me know down in the comment section in this video. But what I'm doing now is I'm preparing to leave Cape Town. I got a lot of suggestions of going to Johannesburg to make a comparison. Also, I was thinking about going to Durban just to see how it is, the comparison of beaches there compared to Cape Town. And also, I thought about, well, since I'm in South Africa, 
why not just visit a whole new country that's near South Africa? So all these things have been in mind. So make sure you stay tuned for the next video in which you will see me in a new location. So until then, thanks for watching and... Peace.